Okay, so let's talk about configuring Ubuntu server as a DNS server. Now, once again, I'm going to flip back and forth between my static and my uh, DHCP assigned addresses, depending on whether I'm trying to download software or use the servers. So I look at my IP addressing. I'm currently on DHCP. I actually wrote myself a little shell, or static rather. Uh, I actually wrote myself a little shell script to simplify this process. So if you... Um, if you want to know how I do that, go back and review my videos on setting IP addresses on an Ubuntu server. But I'm now running a DHCP assigned address on my local network. So I can go ahead and install my software. Now, the DNS server that we're going to use is the Berkeley Internet Name Daemon or Bind. So the command is sudo apt install bind 9, which is version 9 of the Berkeley Internet Name Daemon. Yes, yeah, so I want to go ahead and install it, and that's going to do my install for me. And just like before, when we did our DHCP server, it's also automatically going to start my Name Daemon. So I can do sudo systemctl status of bind 9. And that's going to show me that it's active and running. Network unreachable, but that's okay. <clears throat> we haven't configured anything yet. Okay, so now that I've got it installed, let's go take a look at the configuration files. And those are going to be in forward slash etc forward slash name d or name daemon and it's actually not i do that all the time it's not in name daemon it's in bind and the files are named name d okay so we have several config files here and let's take a look at our first one name d.conf so i'm going to cat name d.conf and this is the primary configuration file but it actually just links to several others, include this one, this one, and this one. And all of those come together to form your configuration. And we're going to play with that a little bit. And we're going to see in a little bit how we can create our own zone in our own zone file. But we're going to start initially setting this thing up as a caching name server. Now, a caching name server means clients can request, use this as a DNS server, and can request names from this, and this will go out and look them up, find them, and then it'll cache the names locally. So if multiple people on your network are trying to resolve the same thing, we don't have to go look it up multiple times unless those cached entries expire. We're going to find that in the name d.conf.options. So let's cat that so we can take a look at it cat name d dot c o n f dot options and actually this is going to be a little easier to look at if we nano it so we're going to nano name d dot c o n f dot options now i did not set that to suit or i did not pseudo that so that's telling me this is unwritable at the moment and that's okay this is going to be basically it's like a config file with some documentation in it. Now, I like making backups of my config files before I do anything with them. So I'm going to exit out, and I'm going to back this up. And I'm going to do it using the copy. And the file that we want is named.conf.options. So named.conf.options. And I'm going to do .ori to identify that as my original file. Now, because I copied it, there we go. I had to sudo it. Oh, good grief. To, let me do this correctly, name d.conf, uh, options to name d.conf.options.ori. Now it'll actually do it now that I've given it a source and destination. All right. So now that I've got that, I want to go ahead. I've created the original file, so it's going to be my backup. So I'm going to edit my name d.conf. So I am going to sudo nano name d.conf.options. 
That was not what I wanted. Namedy.conf, not config. That's what I wanted. Okay, so we're going to set. Now, this is all kind of commented out right here. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to give myself a couple of lines and I'm going to set some forwarders. Now, the way this is going to work, we can see an example of it up here. The forwarders is going to say, well, if you get a DNS request and you don't have an answer to it, send it here. And I'm going to use Google's name servers as forwarders. Okay, and that's all I'm really going to set there. And that's all it's going to take to turn this into a caching name server. So I'm going to write it and then exit out. And I'm going to switch. If you remember, I'm on my DHCP assigned address. So I'm going to switch this to my static address. And I'm going to use a little shell script that I wrote. Dot DHCP.sh. And that should rewrite it. IPA. Ah, shoot. I wanted static, not DHCP. Okay. And now I've got my static address again. All right, I want to restart my name daemon. So what happens when the uh, DNS server loads, or any of our services for that matter, load, what happens is they'll read their config files, they'll put it in memory, and then they'll use it from there. So I can reload or restart a service to have it reread those config files. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just restart it. So it's sudo. Actually, let me clear my screen first to make this easier. Sudo system ctl and i want to restart bind 9 and then i can sudo system ctl status of bind 9 and make sure that everything is active and sure enough it is now again don't worry about the network unreachables because i'm on my static ip addresses anyway we're going to actually test this with some local name resolution here in a minute so you can see that it's working. All right, but it won't go active unless it can successfully read its config files. So at this point, we would be running as a caching uh, DNS server. All right, that's great, but what if I want to handle some name resolution? What if I want to actually host my own zone? Well, we can do that as well. So let's start by taking a look at the um, named.conf file. So I'm going to nano, and I'm not going to sudo this because I'm going to make a backup copy of this in a minute. So I'm going to nano named.conf, and that's my default. Okay, wasn't the one that I wanted. Whoops. Uh, the one that I wanted is and I just completely lost my train of thought and control X and clear let's do an ls dash L and name D dot CNF dot local dot options let's actually take a look at all of them real quick <clears throat> uh, default zones and I'm just gonna cat these cat name D dot CONF this is our base file right and that links in our options, which we just looked at. We can cat name d.conf.local, and that will show some of our local configurations. Uh, add your local configuration file here and consider blah, blah, blah. And this is our name d.conf.options that we just edited. The default zone, that was the other one that I wanted to look at. So we're going to cat name d.conf.default dash zones. And this is going to show us all of our broadcast zones that are predefined. Okay. Now, I'm going to create a new file and I am going to link it into my name d.conf. So now I'm going to sudo nano name d.conf. And this is going to give us our include files. 
And I'm going to create a new zone here. I'm just going to go down one. And I'm going to do zone. Yeah. Zone Dalton.local. And that's going to be in. And I'm going to capitalize in here. And then open curly brackets. This is going to be a master zone. And I'm going to put it in the file forward slash etc forward slash bind. So with everything else, forward slash net dot Dalton dot local. And that's where I'm actually going to put all of my name resolution. So close that. And this is going to say we have a new zone file, Dalton.local. It's going to be a master zone, and this is where you're going to find all the information for it. So I'm going to write that out and exit. Okay. Now, I want to create a new zone file, and I actually have a template for it. It's in db.local, which is right here. So db.local, db.empty, a few other... DB. So we're going to take db.local and we're going to copy that. So I'm going to sudo copy db.local and I'm going to give that the name that I just told the name d.conf file that I was going to use, net.dalton.local. Now I can nano net.dalton.local. And this is what I have. This is predefined. So a bunch of things already set here. Now, before I start adding new records down here, there's a couple of changes I want to make. So my local host right here, I'm going to change that to Dalton.local. And so that's going to be my start of authority, Dalton.local. My serial number here, I'm going to increment the serial number, which tells the DNS server when it reloads the zone, hey, there are some changes here. So we're going to increment this every time that we make a change. So here are a, some records. The start away record is predefined. Uh, the name server record, an address, and an IPv6 address for loopbacks. Now I'm going to start putting in my own uh, records. And I'm going to do file serve in a... And I need the spacing between those. It's going to make it easier, but I don't have to perfectly line it up with these. I'm tabbing it over just because it makes it easier for me. And I'm going to type 192.168.1.101. And then I'm going to do web serve. And that's going to be in, it's going to be an A record, 192.168.1.102. So I've added a couple of A records, and I can add other types of records as well, C name records, MX records, uh, whatever. So I'm just going to start with a couple of these just so that we can see this work. So I'm going to save this file and exit. Now, at this point, I have my configuration. I need to reload my configuration files. I'm going to just restart the uh, system or the bind 9 service. So sudo systemctl restart bind 9. And that said, we have in control process exited with an error code. Let's see systemctl name d dots or status of name d dot service and I'm looking to see okay so we have some errors in our configuration here so this is going to give us our file name d dot conf is missing a semicolon uh, let's see if we can find these real quick so let's clear the screen and it was the name d.conf file that it looked like we had a problem with. So let's sudo nano name d.conf. And aha, right here, we need a semicolon. All right, let's see if that was our only issue. So let's sudo start. Whoops, that won't work. Systemctl 
start bind nine. Okay, that looks better. Pseudo system CTL status of bind nine. And hey, look at that, we're up and running. So things look better. Cue out of there. Um, and let me check real quick. I did switch this back to static. So I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna do an NS lookup. I'm gonna set my server to 192.168.1.10, which is my address. And I'm gonna look up fileserve.dalton.local. And sure enough, look at that. It finds fileserve.dalton.local is at 192.168.1.101. Let me look up webserve.dalton.local. And it is resolving both of those names off of my local server. So my DNS server is up and running. It's functioning as a caching DNS server, and it's also serving those particular uh, A records that I put in the DNS zone. So perfect. Now, I just use NS Lookup. That's a tool that's available on Linux. It's also available on Windows. But there's another tool that we can use. It's called Dig. So I'm going to do Dig at. And dig is going to dig out our records at 192.168.1.10. That tells me which server. And I want fileserve.dalton.local. And dig is one command. And it got an, it's one command to find one record rather than going into the NS lookup. You can also NS lookup and give it a specific name that you're looking for. But this, no pun intended, digs out more information. Here's what we want. So it shows us our question section. It shows us our answer section. And this is what we want to see, file serve.dalton.local, resolve to, if you read the line all the way over, 192.168.10 or 1.101. Okay, there we go. We have our DNS server up and running. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disable bind 9 the same way I did with um, DHCP because I don't actually want it running on my local network. Now again, just like with DHCP, what I just gave you was an example. You're gonna take and modify that to fit your needs on your network. So it'll be your IP addresses, your names, all of that. Um, this was just an example that will hopefully point you in the right direction. Now let me go ahead and stop this. System CTL pseudo system CTL, disable bind nine. And then I can just re-enable that whenever I need it. So remember, if you are running these in a test environment on your local network and you've got DHCP DNS functioning, you're happy with it, uh, you need to keep an eye out um, make sure that it's not creating problems on your local network. And one of the ways to do that, if it starts to create issues, is to go ahead and disable those services. But if you've got them on a VM that's isolated from the rest of your network or in an isolated device, it should be just fine.